They are members and friends of the Gideon Flight Time of uh, Gideon Flight Time Observatory and my team. I would like to welcome you to another online science cafe. Tonight, we are our team is uh, the World Space Week, the United Nations World Space Week, which is celebrated between the 4th and 10th of October. And also at the end of the, um, of the presentation, we'll have our space scientist, Ms. Kelly Dimitriou, uh, who will talk about the recent uh, DART mission that crashed last night on an asteroid. So the West Space Week is an international celebration of science and technology and their contribution to the betterment of the human condition. The United Nations uh, General Assembly uh, actually declared in 1999 that the West Space Week should be held every year between these two days, the 4th and the 10th of October. And the reason is to commemorate these two days, October the 4th, 1957, and October the 10th, 1967. The first date uh, is to commemorate the launch of the first human man made, uh, human -made uh, Earth satellite, Sputnik Adin, that was launched from the Soviet Union that opened the way for the space exploration. And the International Space Treaty that was signed on October the 10th, 1967, um, that uh, agreed uh, that the exploration, uh, that uh, they are going to use space and space exploration for pieces, uh, for peaceful uses. Mm -hmm. And uh, that included the moon and, uh, and other celestial bodies. <coughs> now each year, the West Space uh, Week Association Select a theme for every uh, upcoming West Space Week. So the reason is to provide a focus on the activities and the events that will take place throughout the world. So we have something similar going on uh, everywhere. So this year, the theme that was chosen is space and sustainability. And this is beautiful poster. Uh, uh, is the poster that represents this uh, event. So when we talk about space and sustainability, we are talking about uh, how sustainability in space relates to how humanity uses space, and more presently, the orbital area surrounding the Earth itself as fine its own. So uh, the 2022 West Space Week theme, Space and Sustainability, allows the West Space Week to address sustainability from two different angles. The first is how space benefits society and contributes to sustainable development on Earth. And the second, what are the challenges ahead of us to keep space activities and the space environment safe and sustainable? And when we talk about the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, you can refer to these goals with uh, this number. Uh, um, uh, boxes, colored boxes that we see here on the screen. And these have to do, these are related to some uh, some goals that were set by the United Nations that will help uh, uh, a, a stable economic growth on the planet, um, that will help environmental care and, uh, and, and also e equality. But this will affect only our uh, positive, our generation, without affecting any, any negatively any future generation. So there is a much greater story to tell in terms of how space exploration uh, and remote Earth observation can help uh, to drive this uh, change from our, our own homes. And we have satellites orbiting Earth for many different reasons, even for uh, for military reasons, but we care mostly uh, about Earth observation, remote sensing that help, for the, uh, to, uh, for, that help to maintain sustainable, uh, the sustainable development goals. And uh, the, we have even provided uh, satellites to protect other satellites and even GPS systems that we're using every day uh, that help uh, our people on Earth every day. Uh, if, some, if something goes wrong, another satellite goes to its position, uh, changes or places it for uh, a specific time. It goes, it's re it, gets, it gets repaired, 
and goes back to its position. But sustainable space also means that we have to protect the air, the earth orbiting space, or uh, uh, sorry, the the orbiting the the place that the satellites are orbiting over Earth, because we have a lot of um, satellites that are not useful anymore, and we have also a, a lot of near Earth objects uh, above ten centimeters uh that can be harmful so sustainable space also means that we have to maintain whatever we need only uh, and also to maintain it for the reasons that we need it to that we have maintained uh, that we have us achieve these sustainable goals and one of it is to remove the debris and keep only what we need uh uh, there was a statement that at the start of uh, 2021, there were 6,542 satellites listed as being currently in orbit by the United Nations. Of course, by 2022 that we're talking now, there should be more, but I haven't found the uh, latest number. So in order to ensure the sustainability of future space activities, we must ensure that the space debris can be cleaned up and not pose a threat to future missions. Now, have you ever imagined the world without uh, satellites? Well, there are some factors that could cause it, but uh, because we maintain them, it's impossible to happen. But there are some possible causes. In the top left uh, uh, window, you see that space weather and the so-called character event that, ca effect the car, uh, that happens because of solar flares can destroy satellites. In many cases, we turn them off to protect the electronics, but we have cases in uh, previous years, especially in Canada, if I remember well, that we had loss of many, of, uh, of many electronics on satellites. We also have space debris. Debris, uh, the spacecraft's uh, collision between them, and uh, space sabotage, because as you know, many uh, satellites uh, are used for military purposes, but also uh, in uh, times of peace are used for other reasons, according to the space treaty. So when two nations uh, are not friendly between them, they, there is a chance to sabotage the uh, satellites as well. So this could destroy satellites. But generally satellites improve life. We need them for Earth observations, for remote uh, sensing, uh, for the climate change, to maintain the climate change, uh, measuring the climate change, to identify pollution, uh, look after fires, uh, tsunamis, and other uh, phenomena. <clears throat> uh, we need for navigation, for, posi for positioning, for uh, surveys, uh, to improve the economy, the power stability, and of course for communications. Telecommunications. Now we are talking also uh, in Cyprus about quantum telecommunications. Uh, the beam will, uh, will be received to a telescope from satellites, and this will be then connected to the um, uh, networks. And we it was uh, also released uh, during our uh, Cyprus uh, uh, Space Day last week during the European Space Agency meeting and stakeholders that. <clears throat> We connect uh, <clears throat> at first stage uh, some important buildings like the airport, the hospitals, and use these quantum telecommunications. And of course, it is with the use of satellite. So during this World Space Week, uh, if you are, if anyone of you is willing uh, to hold an event in Cyprus. Me, as the National Coordinator of Cyprus for the United Nations World Space Week, uh, I'm always here to help you hold an event uh, to celebrate, or you may join any of our activities that are announced online on astronomycyprus.eu, or you can find an event near you by, uh, by looking, by searching the events on the uh, wetspaceweek.org. Uh, and um, have in mind that these have to be related for space to space and sustainability. <clears throat> and um, 
uh, of the 169 targets that form the 17 uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, 65 of them directly benefit, benefit through Earth observation, satellites, and related to technologies. So by achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, would be so much harder without the tools and techniques available to scientists throughout space exploration. So some of these SDGs can be achieved through NASA space apps because there are some space apps and uh, uh, tasks that are assigned and they are related to remote sensing and earth observation. So uh, I will be the uh, one of the three judges for the NASA International Space Up Challenge in Nimazo uh, on this uh, coming Saturday, uh, 1st of October and Sunday, 2nd of October. Anyone listening to this may create their own team and uh, go online to the inter International Space Up, NASA International Space Up uh, Challenge Limassol uh, event and uh, re uh, register their team. They can choose among many tasks and hopefully we see you there on uh, Saturday. I would also like to invite you on a Saturday to uh, a combined event. Uh, it is the International Observe the Moon Night, uh, which is a NASA initiative. It's held every year uh, in October. Uh, this year is being held on, is going to be held on the 1st of October. And uh, the Gideon Planetarium Observatory is going to hold uh, an event uh, for observing the moon from seven o'clock in the evening at the Lanaga Municipal Gardens. All the participants will also receive the NASA provided uh, as participation certificate. And uh, I would also like to mention this is an event you can find on NASA website, officially registered. And I would also like to mention that at the same place, uh, another part of our team will be fundraising uh, for the um, uh, for supporting children and uh, you and the youth with uh, um, with chronic disease. So uh, it's a, a child event that uh, the Gideon Planetarium Observatory is supporting for the last 15 years, and we do fundraising by telescopes or observations. If I'm not mistaken, there is a, a charity char, a charity ticket uh, with the value of two euros per uh, target of observation. And uh, we will all invite you to support this event and uh, this uh, initiative to fundraise for this charity organization named Christina Abastor. Thank you for being with us tonight. Keep an eye on our website, astronomycyprus.eu, and on the World Space Week website, worldspaceweek.org, to find uh, any new announced events. Uh, <clears throat> in this, uh, tonight, last night we had a special uh, event, something unique for humanity, and uh, something that happened for the first time ever. Uh, humanity managed to send a mission to hit an asteroid uh, to test the planetary defense uh, system of our planet Earth. And our space scientist, Kate Dimitriou, we talk about it now and tell us all the news, what happened last night and show us some pictures. Yes. Katie? So, um, hi everyone, good afternoon, good evening. I'm going to talk to you uh, about this mission that was a duration of 10 months and I'm going to talk to you about what's going to happen in the following few months as well. So DAR is the first asteroid redirection test mission. It was launched in November last year and its sole purpose is to crash into an asteroid to actually see if it, we can actually change the trajectory. And um, it's probably the first time that scientists have been really, really happy and uh, like space scientists that a mission was actually destroyed. Because I'm happy to say that, uh, yes, this morning at 2 a.m., 
thought was successful and it managed to crash into the astream, the asteroid that it was designed to crash into. So here you have a schematic that shows you what actually happened. Now, this is the asteroid that was hit by DART, the Morphos. It is an asteroid that is 160 meters in diameter. So um, it's, it's quite big. It's like a, like a football pitch, let's say in size. And it's actually a moonlit of a bigger asteroid. So it's a moonlit of this bigger asteroid here that you can see Vivimos. And this one's much bigger, it's 780 meters in diameter. Now, the reason this was chosen is that it doesn't actually pose a threat to the Earth if we change the path of the smaller asteroid that is orbiting around the larger asteroid. It doesn't actually pose any threat to Earth. So if we, if uh, scientists decided to change the path of, of another asteroid that was quite big and that was uh, maybe a threat to Earth, um, that wouldn't have been a good idea. So it's a test on something that doesn't pose a threat. So the actual spacecraft itself is, is only the size of like, say something like a refrigerator. So it's not that big. And, um, but it, it was traveling extremely quickly by the time it got there. So that, that high speed, um, means that it impacted that object at a very, with a very big momentum. And so far, it looks like it did actually shift it from preliminary uh, observations. Now, I'm going to play you next the video from the actual spacecraft as it approached the asteroid early in the morning at 2 a.m. So this is, uh, you know, first person view. It's the is the dart camera on dart, and these uh, these pictures were taken every second. So this is a speeded up frame by frame per second picture. So there you see the Morphos, and it's approaching really quickly and. impact. Okay, so highly successful, highly successful. And what was amazing as well is that the, you could see the detail of, of what that asteroid is composed of on the camera as it was approaching. So it's, it's like, uh, as we've seen in previous missions to asteroids, it looks like a loose collection of rubble um, held together. So the final thing I'm going to share is something that is uh, that was taken uh, in collaboration. Uh, it was Gianluca Massi's project that, uh, from the Virtual Telescope, who I believe works with the Planetarium from time to time, George. And uh, he teamed up with an observatory in South Africa uh, that was in the, a very good place to actually look to see what was happening. And, and this was so exciting when I saw this this morning. So the red arrow shows um, basically what happened after impact. So you see that you have Didymos changing after impact from the slam. So if you look at the red dot, you can see it's progressing and you can actually see a cloud of dust coming off that asteroid during the impact. Okay, so what happens now is we need to observe what's going on with that uh, asteroid, the, uh, the, the, most, the most of system. And to do that, we have to use ground-based telescopes because of course, Obviously, that impactor, DART, was destroyed when it actually crashed into the asteroid. So now, um, observations are going to take place from uh, many telescopes all over the world to actually track um, what is going on and to see what a difference it made. And the whole point of this exercise is 
in the future, maybe when we detect a one of these um, asteroids on a path to collide with Earth, we will have the technology and the know-how um, to be able to deflect it with this method. So it was highly successful so far. It was a fairly cheap mission. It was only 350 million euros, I believe, about, and highly successful, and it looks very promising for the future. Um, any questions? Uh, thanks for mentioning this. I already congratulated uh, Gianluca uh, on, on, the, on his post. I could reach him otherwise. Uh, he must be too busy. So, uh, yes, we are proud of our friends and also they wrote history. They wrote history because they released this first, actually, this uh, changing position of the Dimorphos. And now we are waiting for the other mission that we reach the place and uh, do the aftermath of the collision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's very exciting, uh, very successful. And uh, I'm going to be following the story very closely and see what is actually happening with uh, the Morphos and the Dimorphos system. And may I ask a question? What's about brightness? How much it changes? Um, I, I didn't have time to to research that, but it looks like it changed quite a bit. Look at that. From the first to the second picture to the third to the fourth. I've got, I'm having, uh, so, so this basically, basically I saw this uh, a little bit before the presentation and I thought it was really interesting that we would put it in. So you can see that with that, where that red arrow is, you can see the change in brightness. Um, minutes after the impact. And you may even estimate the uh, mm. velocity of spreading the dust. Yeah, and, and uh, I think, yes, I think they've already, uh, when, when you look at the original, I believe there's timestamps on it. So you can it's see- on, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time span of 14 minutes. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. In between each photo, do you know? Does it have a timestamp on it? I'm struggling to see. I have. I can see an exposure time. I yeah. So I, I believe I that. I believe from the photos that they had last night that they did calculate the the, the velocity of the dust. It, it because it happened at two a.m. Uh, I, I managed to. I managed to watch it like within, you know, like in between bits and bobs at work, and it was very exciting. Um, the, and another thing, um, has has anyone in in the meeting observed Jupiter lately? Yes, last night <laughs> we had <laughs> a, it was uh, out of position last night, closest distance. It was really really beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, it will continue to be very bright for a long time. Yes. Very good for observe, observing. We will turn Saturn are uh, very bright and also Mars is bright now, coming and rising night by night. But Jupiter is something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Kelly, for your uh, presentation and the news. Uh, how to make our space and sustainability celebration? Actually, uh, we, I'll talk about that what I deal close. It's education and culture, <coughs> this, <laughs> this place of activity. And uh, let's discuss each of them separately. So we come to education. It's usually... Uh, how to celebrate World Space Week when you're in the educational system. You may embed uh, World Space Week goals and activity in your curriculum or make something special separately and uh, create extra 
activity, after classes activity. So both work and let's discuss each of them. For example, if we're taking curriculum, let's take primary school. Uh, they study uh, different subjects. And uh, when we talk about math, for example, they have uh, in math apples, two apples and three apples. What stops you to change it into two astronauts and three astronauts? So very simple to switch from one topic to another to uh, World Space Week activity. When we are <coughs> in language lessons, usually the main idea there is uh, vocabulary and uh, rules how to use this vocabulary. So what's about uh, World Space Week? We may switch topics if we are learning only rules. So instead of one word, we may use others. And that's all. So just switching topics. I don't want to discuss more details here because of, first of all, I'm not specialist in linguistics. And uh, second, every any teacher knows better what should be done at that very moment and in which way is the best to switch uh, the topics in case they are not ready in uh, uh, the, the teacher did not put in uh, curriculum already the uh, World Space Week activity there. Well, uh, science, usually it's very simple because of the beginning of year, uh, in many cases, in many curriculum, uh, they study planets. So that's how the Earth, where is the Earth, place of our planet in the solar system and so on. So from this point of view, it's very simple. Otherwise, it could be again switched, for example. Art, it's easy to propose topics about uh, draw something on uh, uh, about space or make uh, of uh, space rocket or and so on. So any type of activity which is going right now could be proposed with topic of World Space Week. Uh, music, <coughs> there are a lot of music dedicated to space. If you need some inspiration, for example, Vangelis Mythodia, it was dedicated to uh, space mission to Mars. Well, the most complicated at the beginning looks the last one, physical education. But let's go to our next slide. There is a mutual project of uh, United Kingdom Space Agency and the European Space Agency, which is uh, trained like astronaut. <laughs> and look at the proposed activity. If you are now in jumping, okay, here is jump for the moon. If you are now cycling, okay, here is another activity and so on. So just choose that one, which is according to your timetable should be studied by students this very moment. Uh, games and other type of activity. So it's so simple and so interesting how you may embed in your own lessons uh, the train like astronaut program. <laughs> of course, you don't need to make your whole year uh, just an, an addition train like an astronaut. Of course not, but you may easily add uh, space activity in your lessons. So it's really simple and at the same time <coughs> it makes exciting. Well, <coughs> let's consider another topic which I am uh, familiar easily is physics in school. Uh, for, at the beginning of year, at least it's one of example, I took one curriculum and check what's going on around the uh, October lessons. First year, of physics, they used to study in some uh, schools, in, su in some programs, they study precisely, that's what we need, sci uh, science plus physics and technology. So this is precisely topic about space sustainability. So it's, uh, it's uh, we don't need to add anything, we just discuss it. At another uh, curriculum, at this period there is velocity. Again, instead of velocity of a car, we may ask what's velocity of, and now again, we may apply any fantasy. For example, if we are in Cyprus, we may ask what's velocity of uh, Hellas uh, Sat 4. It is three kilometers per second and change it into meters per second. 
a regular task for beginning of for students. So it's simple task, <laughs> but we discuss precisely what we need. We need to discuss, we are in Cyprus, we want to discuss about Cyprus satellites. Here they are. If we don't want to discuss generally, the first satellite had velocity eight kilometers per second, so, and make, make the same task. Again, so just apply fantasy, very simple. Uh, for the second year, they use thermal phenomena, and for example, uh, uh, you, we may ask the same question, how much energy is required to uh, increase temperature of, two, of a glass of water for uh, 10 centigrees uh, Celsius, how much energy is required, but then we add at International Space Station. Just simple switch, but this switch uh, change minding of a student. Uh, the student would realize that it doesn't matter where is it. He may solve or she may solve this task anywhere, at any place in the universe. <laughs> so it's wild spreading the idea. Acceleration, with acceleration we have to be accurate, but uh, phys uh, physics, uh, teachers of physics knows what they are teaching. Uh, because of we should choose special part of acceleration where it is possible to consider uh, constant acceleration because of generally we have change of mass and that's why the situation is more complicated. But anyway, it's uh, not very difficult to find uh, uh, topics with acceleration which is more or less reasonable, though it's not constant acceleration, in fact. Well, the fourth year at that period, they study momentum, and uh, momentum is easier. We have now, for example, space, uh, space uh, uh, nanosatellites, which are launched by an astronaut just by throwing <laughs> this nanosatellite away. <laughs> so there was initial momentum like this, a final momentum like that, and uh, here is our task. So momentum and energy could be easily applied uh, in practical tasks, which are going in with space uh, satellites, for example. And uh, magnetism, it's the uh, fifth year. They studied it uh, for a long time. And we may uh, mention, for example, that uh, we have magnetic field of the Earth and uh, anomaly of magnetic field which is registered by spaceships, uh, special satellites, they uh, out of it, it could be found out as a uh, sp uh, distribution of iron in uh, the Earth's crust. So uh, it's, it's a bit of question not precisely to discuss it's difficult to embed such questions in school curriculum, though maybe it's possible. Uh, but uh, it's question of a special report of a student. And now I'm coming to uh, which type of activity could be done is, as extra activity. So uh, in schools, there are usually one week of a certain science, one, one week of chemistry, one week of biology, and why not at the beginning of year to make one week of World Space Week? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> and uh, make the whole uh, week activity, different types of them. So it's uh, it's question of not just one subject, it's question of the whole uh, pedagogical collective. All of them uh, could, uh, could make different type of activities during this week. For example, it could be drawings, and it's easy to pre propose it for uh, primary school and uh, uh, the and uh, gymnasium level schools. It could be wall newspapers. So this is for uh, more uh, grown up uh, students. Uh, so they, they have to make a newsletter and, and put it on a wall. And during the week, it will be uh, any, any student could come pass and read it. Or oh, it could be reports at lessons during one uh, during short period. Usually I recommend to make uh, one report 
because of it's three minutes, you a teacher could dedicate three minutes from the whole uh, lesson activity, which is around four, 40 minutes. So three minutes could be dedicated, but it's not possible to make uh, to listen to three, four, five students and each has three minutes. No, just one is enough and let them struggle to have this report for uh, the, and there are many type of activity. The first who, who requests, the first get, for example, or who has uh, the best uh, something somewhere, so the, the best results of test or whatever. So does matter, so we may stimulate in any way, but what's about, for example, reports for three minutes, let's talk about cycles. We may go, for example, to our to the website Heavens Above. It's written here. And here is our website. And uh, we may choose position where we are. So let's choose that we are in Cyprus. And uh, what's important for us is this two uh, lines. It is the daily prediction for brighter satellites and satellite database. Okay, let's suppose that we have a lesson on the 4th of October and uh, let student make his report and that evening everyone could make observation of a satellite. So here is our list of satellites. One of them in, is International Space Station and, and it will be as bright <laughs> as Jupiter <laughs> and reasonably uh, uh, good time at 19.11. It will start on maximum 1914 will be the brightest moment. Okay. For photography. Yes, exactly. And uh, the, this site pr uh, shows position of a satellite, shows its best position. So you may prepare your camera in advance and just wait the moment when it is necessary. So uh, everything is prepared for us to do. Well, so let's take the first one, Cosmos SkyMed 1. What does it mean? Do you remember I said at the beginning that there is satellite database? So you go to this database and, uh, okay, I go further. I found out that it is an Italian spa uh, spaceship. And uh, <coughs> here it, there is this ESA uh, special page dedicated to this very satellite. Here it is. And this satellite make observations of uh, the Earth. And uh, if you are a teacher of geography, uh, you are at paradise. You may choose any topic about those countries with, which you are studying now, which uh, this uh, satellite already take uh, data about. And you may embed them in, your, uh, in the talk of this specific student in that uh, three minutes report. So that student has to discuss about the satellite one minute, about the data about this specific country, for example, another minute, and uh, what's, what and his own uh, attitude, the third minute. So did the student find it very interesting or very exciting or whatever? So. It's about, for example, if you're teaching geography, if you're teaching uh, astronomy or in physics, okay, you might discuss, for example, why this satellite is uh, uh, solar-orientated uh, uh, orbit. So it means that every time it fly over a specific place exactly at the same local time, constantly. That's why it always fly at daytime all over Europe and Africa. So uh, there are always uh, uh, observations when the sun illuminates the, uh, the planets. So on. So how it was organized, why it is like this. So it depends on just your curriculum and the level of, student, uh, of mathematics and knowledge the students have. <coughs> well, what's about culture? In culture, we have, for example, museums, galleries, exhibition halls. One point is simple. Every year in October, all of these organizations, they have their own activity. And at the beginning of October, there, are, there is something always in museums, galleries, and exhibitions, correct? It's always happened. So why not that period, they uh, present something special 
on the beginning of October. It's so simple. For example, if <coughs> you're in a museum, you may dedicate special exhibition with exhibits which are not constantly on uh, exposition, which are in funds and uh, make special exhibition about it. We have, for example, a publication in planetarium how to embed coins in uh, uh, pro planetarium programs, but museums have for coins, they have uh, not just coins, they have uh, many uh, space related items. Uh, they, you could not even realize that it is space related, so you might consult specialists and they will help that. Yes, indeed, in your funds are assumptions that is related. Well, galleries, uh, when you are, we are in, uh, with galleries in painting, the, in funds there are many paintings which never shown, but which are related to the space. For example, uh, artists thought about uh, science fiction. And once we organize such exhibition in the Dnipropetrovsk uh, Fine Art Gallery, they took from the uh, funds uh, artists' uh, paintings dedicated to space art, uh, to scientific, scientific uh, fiction art. So there, there were many, not many, there are a few of them, around 10, 10 paintings, but they exhibit them, <laughs> very spe special for this specific moment. So just apply fantasy and you will find <laughs> which way you may do on your own place this World Space Week activity. Alexander, we have to mention here that the, what you refer to the publication has been displayed for seven years here in the planetarium and many people visiting it. And it's also, it is found in the space exhibition of our Kidian Planetarium Observatory. And also we hold the um, uh, Astro Kids Astro Art project, which was part of the, initially of the Global Astronomy Month project. And now we have, uh, a long, uh, we have prologues for the whole year and we collect from schools and uh, visitors, um, paintings all over the year related to space. So you, uh, we see how, how it should be developed. So it's just to apply fantasy. As for planetarium exhibition, this article is, was just about few items from it uh, because of it was dedicated only to manned flight. And uh, in it was uh, last year, and last year we celebrated uh, Jubilee of Gagarin's flight. That's why the article was about manned flight only. Well, <clears throat> and this coin is dedicated to the first ever satellites launch to space. So we could see here the Earth and the satellite orbiting around it. So it's re really interesting. Well, uh, let's uh, uh, go further. Concerts, playgrounds, disco, nightclubs. Again, all of them have activity during the whole year. So why not just... Uh, uh, in your schedule put uh, beginning of October uh, with a theme about World Space Week and this year it is sustain, sustain, space and sustainability. Uh, as for playgrounds and not obligatory just playgrounds, any organization could uh, uh, ask a municipality to uh, give uh, to that organization uh, opportunity on the central square in that uh, town or city or just a village uh, to perform activity for children, for example, or for just for strangers about uh, asking questions, playing games and so on, who is uh, ded and dedicate them to World Space Week. So it's really simple, simple to by organize if you need to do it uh, just um, without special resources, but if you have resources dedicated to World Space Week activity, some funds for it, okay, you will develop it longer and uh, you uh, uh, more, uh, more uh, apply more resources. Well, so let's conclude. So this year, space and sustainability is the main topic. And we discuss now how you may do it in educational sector or in culture sector and just apply fantasy and do it. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, excellent presentation.
uh, these are products that they are uh, all over the year applied to schools, to visitors, but especially we with uh, the proposed themes uh, of the every year. So what space week has changed accordingly to match the theme proposed by the United States, uh, United Nations West Space Week Committee. Uh, any questions? Uh, 25th of October, we have the partial uh, solar eclipse in Cyprus. So uh, we are going to observe it. Okay, so I'm showing the 25th of October uh, Science Cafe uh, theme. It's going to be related to the solar eclipse over the old world. Uh, Alexander is going to do a presentation and most probably we have some pictures of the eclipse taking place uh, that day. Uh, it's going to be partially visible from Cyprus and uh, around 40%. And uh, see you on the 25th of October at 8 o'clock, same time. And we will be happy if you share the event among your friends and have more participants. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night. Good nice evening, Alexa Gurasi.